Hey guys, it's Jan, not a real farm. So we survived the inch and a half rain last night and my floor thankfully is still dry. Everything is doing amazing in the greenhouse. Um, it's just a lot of work now because we've got a lot of transplants that we're doing. Um, and of course here we have all the transplants that are on the table, tomatoes and corn and basil, um, babera nuts, I've got butternut, gobo, all kinds of different things here on the table. And of course, a plethora of peppers and broccoli. And of course, peanuts. I've planted so many plants of those right now. Bara nuts, blueberry cherry, sweetie cherry. Of course, here's my corn. This is a Dutch butter popcorn. Um, so it doesn't get very big but apparently it's supposed to taste like butter. So I thought I'd plant a few of them and see how that goes. I'm gonna plant them outside. So guys, these are my blueberries that I'm going to be planting. Um, we have another area next to the raised garden beds, um, just in the back 40 there that I'm going to be putting up. And then these are gonna be secured in by basically a, another building that almost looks like a greenhouse. So that way we don't have to worry about the deer uh, getting a lot of our crop because the deer are out in herds this year. It's unbelievable. I, I have never seen this many deer out and about. So um, I'm taking extra precaution this year. Okay, so we've got some blackberry plants in the back. Over there we've got cucumber, we've got tomato. These are just miniature cucumbers here. So put those in there. And then of course here we've got these are more things that are waiting to be transplanted. So we're looking at the zucchini, we're looking at beefsteak tomatoes. These are in here, mini sweet peppers that I like to grow. More cucumbers, tomatoes, beans, and basil. These are going to be the mini tomatoes that I like to grow as well. These are kind of like a saladette tomato. And then guys, here's my soy. My soy is loving it in here. It's gotten so tall. I threw a little, little green garlic in the middle of a lot of these so that we can enjoy some, just some garlic greens. Got tomatoes again in the back. Guys, I planted way too many cucumbers, so those are going to be starts for people. If they show up this year, we're gonna have to probably put some starts out for people. More beans, of course. My blackberries are doing amazing. These are new blackberries that I put in. Um, I got 30 more Primark blackberries uh, bushes to put in this year, so they are loving it. And then here, you guessed it, guys, it's zucchini. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't gonna plant a bunch of zucchini this year, but I did, and I'm gonna put it in different places. Um, so once again, we've got some beefsteak tomatoes coming up. I have an Oregon spring tomato. We've got chamomile coming up here. And we've got baby corn in the back, so that's just sort of starting to come up. So that will be transplanted somewhere. Guys, these are the carrots that I had put in the flat. So now what I'm gonna do is just poke these out and put them wherever I want. They're tall enough now, you're not gonna injure them. You just scoop them on out and put them wherever you want. More blackberries and tomatoes. And then over here, I have a Canadian cranberry bean. Let's even see if it's, oh. Look at this, guys. It's my very first bean. Right on. That's cool. I wonder if there's any, any other ones on there. I've been so busy, I haven't really been paying attention to this plant. Yeah, so there you go, guys. I got one bean today. My very first, uh, very first harvest. Mm. Oh my goodness. Super sweet. I love, I really love fresh green beans. They're just so good. And here, 
We have a telegraph cucumber. We are growing golden cow wonder peppers. Our celebrity tomatoes like usual. We have a jumbo red pepper we're growing. I managed to get a hold of some Heinz paste tomatoes. So we're growing those. Snowball cauliflower. And I have some uh, Palestine watermelon that I'm excited to plant. And then these guys here are all my blueberry cherry tomatoes. They're gonna be spread out everywhere that I could possibly put them. They were amazing last year. Sweet bell peppers. More cucumber. We've got cow peas, guys, which seem to really love it in here. This one is a German tomato that's loving it. It's really actually quite warm in here right now, so these guys are really liking it in here. And then down in this tray, let's see what this is. We have kidney beans. This is cilantro. We have celery, we have basil. My basil is finally starting to take. I gotta grow as much basil as I can because we're gonna do a basil collab with Miss Lippy. So I gotta make sure that I got the basil I need. We've got black cherry, we've got red peppers, just regular sized red peppers. I've got a nice mammoth basil that's growing here too. I did grow a cinnamon basil too. Uh, that is a weed. <laughs> There's a beefsteak tomato coming up behind it. These tall guys here, if you can see them, I'm kind of facing the sun, so it's a little bit hard to see, but these guys here are fava beans. If you look closely, the black ants, for whatever reason, seem to like my fava beans, but um, they don't really seem to mind, so I'm not going to panic about it. I didn't plant too many of them because they get so big, but um, that is going amazing. We've got peas that have started to pop up underneath the netting, so I've got to just adjust the netting there so they can actually crawl up. And then over to the side, I've got to plant my cantaloupe, of course. But over to the side here, we have an African bean that I'm growing. It loves the heat. So we put a little few plants along here. Lots of beans I did because they're just so easy to grow. More peas. There's more peas in here than, than what there were a few days ago. So they're just popping up all over the place. Have to get in here and do some weeding. And then we've got squash. I put this guy over here because he's just out of the way for now and I'm probably gonna transplant him outside when the temperature seems to be okay for him. And in this corner, what I did was I mounted, just used a, a staircase that we had in here and took the watermelon and put them in here so they can just sort of cascade down the stairs and kind of just have their own little space in here where they're out of the way and I'm not tripping on them. And I thought this guy down here was dead, but he's not. It is a Mexican huckleberry plant. Now, they're very different from the, the huckleberries that we grow here for garden huckleberries. They are a sweet huckleberry. So I thought that the temperature might be a little bit hard for him, but he's actually starting to come back to life. I thought he was dead. so. They're a plant that basically looks, that gives you berries, that does look like the huckleberry that we grow, but uh, is, you know, 10 times more sweeter. So excited about that. We've got a miniature cabbage. These guys are, are a cabbage that's done in 50 days. They only have a small head on them, so these will be harvested soon. They're already starting to, let me just see the other guy. I think he's starting to, yeah, so he's starting to develop already in the middle. And we've got romaine lettuce. I put a couple of blackberry plants here because you can always move them. And more beans. 
So this is a wax bean and then some more lettuce. And then my beautiful, beautiful, I'm proud of them right now. I'm gonna stare at them as long as I can because the bugs haven't bothered them yet. We planted these before <laughs> the bugs could really sort of get at them or the moths could get at them, which I don't have to cover them right now, but these are my broccoli plants and they look amazing. There's not even a single, now I have to knock on wood, but there's not a single bug on these yet that are leaving holes or doing anything terrible to them. So this is a sprouting broccoli, so it's not gonna have a main head, it's just going to have a bunch of spears that grow and you just clip them off. But super healthy and happy, so I did plant, you know, quite a few because once they're done sprouting, you're done, you can pull the plant, so. And for some reason, my son it, all of a sudden really loves broccoli. So I had to step up my game a little bit this year with the broccoli. More beans. Guys, there's a big pile of radishes over there. We eat radishes for heartburn. Takes it away 10 minutes tops if you have a, a radish, if you have heartburn. These are my cayennes, my purple ones. More kidney beans. And my horseradish is doing amazing. Now, if you look at the leaves, it does have a little bit of bug bites out of it, but nothing that's going to do anything detrimental to it. It's doing amazing. What else do I have over here? Oh yes the bed of lettuce and beans that I originally planted. Look how tall everything is getting. So we've just got a frilly lettuce. We've got a multitude of beans in here, as you can see. And some garlic. I love garlic greens, like on a steak or anything like that. And then of course our beets are, are growing very nicely too. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to, to take the beet greens actually off of the plant, just for a salad, just to top a salad. But uh, over here we have Swiss chard in the corner. So this bin is gonna be full once everything is, you know, full grown. But um, these are purple beans that I've got in the middle. And then these over here are gonna be a green snap bean. So we're gonna have a lot of beans to harvest. And I see they're doing actually really well. Got to do some weeding, but other than that, they're great. The purple beans have really taken off over there. And of course, I'm sure you can probably hear the crickets that I have in here too. <laughs> and guys, the uh, strawberry bed is doing amazing. Let me just take you down to some of the strawberries here. We've got flowers upon flowers, and now we've got strawberries beginning. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop outside just to show you what the beds look like, as long as I can speak through the wind here. My husband actually worked his butt off this weekend. He really put together the cattle panel um, around the garden beds that I have outside. Let's get the door open here. And we're not done constructing the door just because we ran out of time in dry weather, but he did an amazing job. The cattle panel around, you know, all of my beds, except for the one I'm moving on the end, looks amazing. And what we did was, you know, we came down here, of course, the tractor, when I showed you, it was sunk over there in that big pile of mud. And we finally got that out, but we basically had to carry everything down by hand all the tools, all the cattle panel, and he walked back and forth, back and forth across the yard to get repurposed wood so that we could put up this cattle panel because with the prices of wood right now, uh, a two by four I think is going for 11 or $12 here aboard. So yeah, we were just gonna use what we had and I think that's probably the, the, best, the best thing to do. So let's take a walk up here if I can get through the mud. So I just have to unhook the door because the door is latched, you can see here. 
but we haven't finished constructing the door yet, so it is bungee corded. Okay, so let's open the door here. It's kind of neat because he made it almost look like a barn door, which I really love. Let's open this up. So I was out here this weekend planting beans, broccoli. I'm going to try and keep out of the shadow here. I planted carrots. I planted lettuce in this bed. Back here in this bed in the back, this is my blueberry bed that desperately needs some attention, but with all the rain, I just haven't had the opportunity to really get in here and start doing what I need to do. And you can see down here all the mud that I'm contending with. Watch. Right? So it hasn't been a great year in terms of mud, but a lot of the blueberries are coming back. You can see that they're, they've actually got leaves on them. This guy's got some leaves on him here. So the blueberry bed is actually doing okay. I just have to get in here and I have to really tidy it up a little bit. Look at the pool of water behind my beds this year, guys. Behind the fencing, isn't that crazy? So essentially, uh, what I did was I came out here to this bed and I planted black chickpeas or garbanzo beans, some of you may know them by. Um, then I planted more peas, of course, because guys, you know, with this cattle fencing, you can totally take advantage of growing crops that grow up the fence, right? So by him creating this sort of space for me. I can take advantage of all the cattle panel now that hits the ground um, and, and basically plant crops when the soil hopefully dries out a little bit um, that can use the cattle panel to climb up. Okay, and we have more cabbage. I'm going to take a chance and put the cabbage outside and see what happens. More beans pretty much to the end. I threw in some shallots and some beets. Pretty excited about the chickpeas though. They're a cool season vegetable, so we'll see. We'll see how they do. I feel like we're skipping right right from spring to, to summer here, but we'll see how they do. And then of course in this bed here is all the strawberries. So I had to come out and tidy it all up, cut out the dead leaves give them a little fertilizer to wake them up. And uh, after that rain, they are just coming, coming to life. And then over in this bed, you guessed it, more beans, <laughs> more carrots, more lettuce, um, and I also put in, well, the shadow's there. I hope you can see it. But I also put in baby corns that really don't grow that tall, maybe two feet tops. And if I need to, I'm going to secure them to the cattle panel here. But these are just simply for baby corn. They don't grow any bigger. So it'll be for stir fries or things like that. So that's what we have planted there. And then way in the back, we're just going to take... Take a walk down here. We have, here comes the wind. Leeks, more beans. Ooh, I'm trying to protect you from the wind. And here I got a hold of a Kandahar okra, which is a multicolored okra. Um, and it's open pollinated, so you can save the seed. And it, it, it develops these cool looking okra um, the shape is the same, but the colors are like red and green and blue. It's kind of cool. So I'll be saving the seed from this because uh, it's kind of a very unique okra. And then, of course, in the back across the cattle panel here, I only just planted them yesterday, but um, it's going to be sugar daddy sweet peas. 
So my husband can have his wish about having more peas this year. I've got to step up my game on the peas too. Sometimes I find peas really frustrating uh, to grow, even though sometimes they can be easy. Um, if you leave them too late, they're bitter. If you pick them too early, they're bland. It's, it's the strangest thing. And here, unfortunately, this cup blew away, but here, guys, here's my flax. I just put a few plants of flax in. Peanuts. All the way, there's one, two, three, four, five. So six plants of peanuts. I've got some beans and I've got more broccoli outside. And then, of course, I've planted spinach. And I've also planted what's called a flagpole scallion so they grow almost two and a half feet so i will be harvesting those as well and probably letting some of them go to seed so i can save it i'm just going to walk over to the garlic bed so you can see we're going to be moving that shortly sun's at the wrong angle but i'll do my best to show you so the garlic has now started to sprout see that it started to sprout and we've got some new sprouts here wow there's more sprouts here now than there was yesterday this is garlic more garlic and wow more garlic here and then we've got more in the back so that is doing amazing it's actually coming up pretty well I wasn't really sure if it was going to come back because it was really super cold this winter but uh, it seems to be doing just fine evidence that they came down to check out the garden and you can follow it all the way through my bed but it didn't work out for them so they walked away apparently <laughs> anyways this is amazing I'm so proud of my husband he does things and puts things together that I just have no creativity or imagination for and repurposing the wood saves us money we're not going out and you know buying brand new uh, two by fours or whatever we need. We're just taking what we've got around the property, and these boards actually came from the 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 garden bed that was left by the previous owner because we're actually getting rid of that because the wood is, you know, some of the boards are are rotted out, but some of them aren't. So he repurposed it and put the cattle panel in with it, and so now all we have to do is finish the door. And just in case you're probably wondering what this is on the bottom, I did cover this up. These are my mammoth gray stripe sunflowers. So I want to give them the best chance they can as possible on the outside. I want to grow a lot of sunflowers this year. Sunflowers seem to just, I don't know, make a garden really happy. And I put one over here too. So I'm going to leave them under the cover because I know that the deer will just come by and mow them over when they're this small. And then what I did here inside, just on the other side of the garden bed here, is I'm using the cattle panel. The ground is so soft right now. What I did was I dug out a trench for my sweet uh, cherry tomatoes. And so just covered them in with some really good dirt before the rain came. And now I'm going to attach them to the cattle panel and let them grow up the cattle panel and save myself uh, a container or two and use it somewhere else. So these are my red cherry tomatoes that I had growing in the greenhouse last year. Now I do have some that I did plant in the greenhouse, but I thought this would be a good experiment to see if they'd stay growing outside this year. We have another rainstorm coming in on Thursday and we are doing our best to try and get everything that we can done. Um, it's funny, my neighbor says, you know, you should get a, a dump truck or two of gravel, but guys, when the ground is this soft, I can't take a tractor across that. There's just no way. So, and we're going to have to do some more pumping again later on to take the water now away from the greenhouse and back down to the front. So one project at a time, right guys? So that's it. I just really just wanted you to see kind of the progress of what we're doing in the garden outside, regardless of the weather and the awesome job my husband did on the cattle panel around the garden bed. I am so proud of him. Sometimes he just has this imagination I just don't have. And, uh, you know, and then he looks at me with the food and he says, I couldn't do that. So it's good to have a partner that you can work with and you both sort of, you know, have different skills, but uh, he's awesome. He's, he does amazing work. That's pretty much it guys for today. I just wanted to share with you kind of what I was doing for the morning. Um, it's gonna be in the 70s today, a little later for heat. So I'm able to sort of get back out here and, and keep going. 
going to be going to the back 40 later and taking a look at those beds. I'm scared. <laughs> it might be too wet to even bother to walk down there. I'm not sure. But uh, anyways, just wanted to say I'm still growing through all of this crazy weather. So that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the little garden tour that I gave you. And uh, thumbs up if you like the new cattle panel surround for the garden beds. I'm loving it. See you soon.